Hi everyone, welcome to my channel Design with Ruzbe. Continuing with CSWA practice problems, today we'll work on question 3.1. This is a first question from part 3 of the problem sets. And in my opinion, generally most of the questions that we are going to work in part 3 are kind of more important than the previous questions that we worked on. And my reason is that these questions are more similar to what we actually see out there in a the real world and in industry. So as an example, this question, question 3.1, you can see this design. And this design is kind of similar to the rack design. Uh, if you're familiar with the rack and pinion design, this is uh, similar to the rack. And it's always great for you to learn how to model this part because in a real world, one day maybe you need to model this part. So that's why I want to put some emphasis on this chapter and I want to ask you to pay closer attention to these details for this chapter. So with this introduction, let's take a look at this question. In this question, first of all, unit of measurement is millimeter gram second. Like always, we need to ensure we are using the same unit of measurement when we work in SOLIDWORKS environment. Now, we have a symmetric geometry. And you can see that we have different views. We have top view, front view, we have the 3D model, and we have detail A. What I want to do here is that I want to start with the top view and then focus on making a 3D model of the top view. And then at the end, I'm going to focus on a teeth section of the geometry. I'm going to make one tooth and then I'm going to use sketch pattern to make 24 teeth in this geometry. So with this introduction, let's jump into SOLIDWORKS and start modeling this part. In SOLIDWORKS, first thing first, we need to check unit of measurement and you can see that we have millimeter gram second as unit of measurement. This is a correct unit of measurement, so we're good to go. Now, in order to start modeling from the sketch tab, I'm going to click on the sketch and then here I'm going to choose top plane. First, I need a rectangle. So let's click on rectangle command and then I'm going to make one here. We also need two circle on each side of the geometry. So I click on circle command and then here I make one circle and the second one here. And I repeat this process for the right side. One circle and the second one. Now looking at top view in a question, you can see that the distance between the center point of the circles is 164 millimeters. So I click on a smart dimension, click on a center point center point and this is 164 millimeter also we know that the diameter of the large circle is 16 millimeters so i click on that circle and this is going to be 16 millimeter looking at the top view you can also see that the diameter of the inner circle is 7.5 millimeters so i click on this circle and the diameter should be 7.5. I repeat this for the right circle. Okay, awesome. So now we have a 2D sketch of the top view. We are ready to extrude this sketch. So let's click on feature, click on extruded bus. And then here I need to select the contour. Looking at the front view, you can clearly see that the height of the circular region is larger than the height of the center region. We have 20 millimeter versus 12 millimeter. So what I can do, I can first extrude the inner section or a rectangular section. So let's click on this area, just this area. And because it's a symmetric geometry, from the direction, from this drop down menu, I'm going to choose meet plane. And the overall height, I'm going to choose 12 millimeter. Click on OK, and that's the center part. Now I want to extrude the circular region. So what I can do, I can click on this drop down menu, click on a sketch 2, and then click on extruded bus. And then here the sketch 2 is activated. So now I can select this contour. I can select this one, I can select this, I can select this one, and now this time I know that the height of the extrusion should be 20 millimeter. So I click here, change it to 20 millimeter, and that's it. Great. So now we have the 3D model of the geometry. It's time to add the teeth 
and then we are done. Okay, so next step is focusing on a teeth. How can we make a model for the tooth? So what we can do, first of all, we need to focus on a front view. So I click on a sketch, I click on a sketch command, and then here I'm going to choose the front plane. Now here, all I need to do, because I want to use linear sketch pattern, I just need to model one tooth. So let's model that. Click on line command, and if you look at detail A, you can see all the dimensions that you need for modeling a tooth. So let's make one here. I make something like this. And then I click on drop down menu, I click on center line, and I make a center line. Because I want the tooth to be symmetric, I click on this line, hold control, click on the center line, and then I click on the left line, and from the relationships that we have here, I choose symmetric, okay? Now, we know that the angle between two lines, left and a right line, should be 40 degree. So I click on a smart dimension, click on this line, click on this line, and this should be 40. The distance between the starting point of the tooth and the right side is 18 millimeter according to the numbers that we see in detail A. So I click on this point, I click on the right line, and this should be 18. The width of the geometry, this top line, is 2 millimeter according to detail A. So I click on it and this should be 2 millimeter. And finally, the height of the tooth is 2.5 millimeters. So I click on the line, I click on this line, and this should be 2.5. Okay? So now you can see that our geometry is fully defined. Let's close this geometry because I want to extrude it, I need a contour. So click on the line and then let's connect these two points, okay? So now I have everything ready, I can extrude this feature. Let's click on feature, go to extruded bus, and then here, I don't wanna have a mid plane, so from the drop down menu, choose up to surface, and then rotate the geometry, and we wanna extrude this 2D sketch up to this surface, and you can see the preview. Click on okay, and this is one tooth that we need. Okay, now according to the front view, we need 24 teeth. So how can we do that? There is a tool that we can use in SolidWorks. All we need to do, go to Feature tab, and then you can see the Linear Pattern command. Click on it, and then here, you need to choose the direction. So I use this line as my direction line, okay? You can see the arrow here. Um, I'm assuming this is a direction that the linear uh, pattern is going to happen so most probably I have to change that direction because I want to have that pattern going to the left side and then here for the distance if you look at detail A you can see the distance between one tooth to the other tooth is six millimeters so I change this one to six and I need 24 instances that's why I have 24 here now for direction two, because we don't want to have uh, direction two, you don't need to worry about this part. Simply click on feature and faces. And then here I have to choose the object that I want to make pattern of. So to do this, click on this model tree, and then I'm going to choose bus extrude three, which is the tooth. I click on it and you can see the preview now. Click on okay. Okay, so that's it. That's the final geometry. Now it's time to check the total volume and make sure that this is a correct geometry. Let's go back to the question and find the total volume. In the question, you can find the total volume in the right side. You can see that the total volume provided is 38,144 cubic millimeters. Let's go back to the SOLIDWORKS and find the total volume in our model. In SOLIDWORKS, in order to find the total volume, like always, you can click on Evaluate and then click on Mass Properties. And here you can see the total volume. The total volume of the object that we have here is 38,144 cubic millimeters. This is exactly the same as what we've seen in a main question, which means that the modeling that we have here is correct. Okay, awesome. 
So that's a wrap for today's video. I hope you enjoyed this video. If you have any question or feedback, please leave comments down below. Thanks again for watching. Hope to see you again soon in the next videos.